I'll never forget where the 15 of us sat around the table and said, okay, can we do this? And everybody said, yeah, we can do it. And we all threw a hundred bucks into the center of the table. And that was our seed money was $1,500. This is Ann Fleming, a full-time artist who in 1997 was one of the first group of people who started Art in the Pearl, an outdoor art festival in Portland, Oregon. When we started Art in the Pearl, we got together because there was no quality outdoor art festival in Portland. And we pulled together every leader or ex-leader of an art organization in Portland to come onto the board. There were 15 of us. Their mission? To create a bridge between the artists and the community and to allow artists themselves to build a venue where they can sell their work in a beautiful setting. And with that first $1,500 and a group of volunteers, they started what is now almost a 28-year-long tradition of connecting artists with their community. The first year, it was crazy. Everybody was doing everything. And it was just those 15 people. And when it came to the actual festival the first year, our, all of our families were there. <laughs> Every friend we could recruit, everybody. It was so uh, grassroots and communal that first year, but it was kind of crazy too. And that grassroots mentality has stuck throughout the evolution of Art in the Pearl, which remains an all-volunteer, nonprofit organization. And to them, it's all about artists supporting artists. I think that what's wonderful about it is that each artist has their own particular medium and therefore they're sensitive to the needs of each medium. I mean, they're, they're artists themselves. Since the first year, the festival has grown in size and scope, adding educational programs and collaborations with other local organizations and businesses along the way. We brought in organizations that could actually educate because education was a big piece. Mm -hmm. So we had Georgie's Ceramic Supply doing clay demonstrations all weekend. Pacific Northwest Sculptors did sculpting all weekend. The wood turners were there turning wood. So we also had that educational piece. It helped the organizations in Portland get some visibility too, which was great. Starting an event like this was no easy task. And back then, there was only one way for artists to submit their applications and hope to be invited to sell their work. Anne shared the words of her fellow former board member, Lynn Sedlak Ford. Everything was manual. Applications were sent out through our mailboxes. Slides arrived at our P.O. box with the completed applications from the artists. We sorted all the applications manually according to medium category. Slides were projected, jurors scored on sheets of paper, scores were tallied with calculators. Human error was always a possibility, but we double checked once again manually. While this worked all right at first, it became a handful year after year to collect, manage, and score what soon became hundreds of applications from artists all over the country. And the more our reputation grew, the more applications there were, and it just ended up being this huge job. And as a group of volunteer artists, this huge job took up precious time. The biggest commodity that an artist has is to own their time. That is the big piece. And if your time is eaten up every spring by, you know, at least a week of pulling this stuff together, you've just lost a week of production time. You don't get that back. In 2007, they found Zapplication, an online platform designed just for what they needed, a way to digitally collect applications, score artwork, manage booth payments, and communicate with artists. So if you've got something that can organize that and streamline it and make it simpler. So when Lynn came to the board and said, here is this product and and look what we can do with it, we're all like going, great, (laughs) go for it. Using Zap also came with the benefit of casting a wider net in the pool of artists looking to show their work. They're coming from the East Coast in, which is really great for the community, I think, on one hand, because it revitalizes what people see. It's something new. Yeah, it did get the word out. With Zap on its side freeing up time, Art in the Pearl turned into a successful yearly event, one that to this day continues to serve the mission of bringing together artists and the community, and one that couldn't be done without a dedicated and passionate team of volunteers. I worked with some amazing people that had one thing in common, which was they were uh, in it for the good for everybody. They were generous, they worked hard, they did what they said they were gonna do. It's one of my proudest achievements is to have been 
pulled into that group and to have gotten to know and work with those people. Thanks to Art in the Pearl, artists find more than just buyers. They find unique connections with each other and the art community as a whole. Every artist is in their studio, you know, all the time. So they're pretty much isolated. But that we could come together with these very unique personalities and create these long lasting working relationships is really, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty cool.